Hello and welcome to the third video in this series on the Industrial Revolution. This one is a brief, super, super, super brief overview of capitalism, socialism, and communism. Uh, here's the big picture. Capitalism and market competition fueled the Industrial Revolution, and new wealth increased the standard of living for some. Social dislocations associated with capitalism produced a range of economic and political ideas, including socialism and communism. So here's the view of the two dysfunctional systems that I'd like to share with you. Uh, over here you can see that there are workers down here at the bottom who are just getting crushed by the people in the sort of upper class. And then above them there are the soldiers keeping everyone down. And then there's the um, clergy above them. And they say, we fool you, as in um, sort of keeping you distracted. And then these are the political rulers at the top. And they are crushing you just by ruling you. And then money is at the top of the pyramid. That's capitalism by this cartoon. Um, and then over here, socialism. It's like everybody's working together, everybody's kind of on the same level, but nothing's really getting done all that well. It's unfortunate. Okay, so let's talk about whose ideas are whose here. Because in capitalism, the writer that's consistently pointed to as one of the founders of the set of ideas uh, that is capitalism, classical economics, um, is Adam Smith. And he wrote a book called The Wealth of Nations, which set up some of the basic core ideas of what would make for a good capitalist system. Um, socialism had two main thinkers at its core, uh, socialism and communism. Uh, Karl Marx, who's on the left here, he's got the really great sort of rounded beard. And Friedrich Engels, who's on the right and has got sort of a more traditional almost, it kind of looks Civil War-y to me, but that's because I'm an American. Uh, the writings that they both worked on um, was called the Communist Manifesto, which was taking some socialist economic ideas and making them part of a larger political system and putting at its core the idea of revolution. But the main thing that uh, Marx wrote on his own was called Das Kapital, a book where he very, very, very closely picks apart the capitalist system. This is a very long book. It's, it's worth reading. You should do it. Okay, but here's some features of capitalism. The idea was that competition would drive growth. People all competing with each other would, you know, build new pieces of technology and try out new ways of doing business. And if they started to fail, they would just try something new. Um, and that they would use wealth to make more wealth by investing in things and getting money from the money they made with the new stuff that they built. And that's, you know, the idea of entrepreneurship. Um, and it increased the standard of living for a lot of people. The middle class grew, and it changed the way people lived their lives and changed the family and all that. Um, but one of the core features of capitalism is the idea that the government should keep out and not be involved, at, hopefully at all, but at maybe just doing the foundations of what capitalism needs to grow and stay safe. Um, but there were negatives to this capitalist system. The average person didn't have enough money to make money, like would be idealized in the entrepreneurial setup. Um, workers were controlled by managers uh, far more than even would seem like part of a free system. Um, and there were dirty and dangerous working conditions because it was cheaper. And there was an unequal distribution of wealth because there were lots of people who had basically nothing. And then there were just a couple people who had a whole lot of stuff. Um, socialism and communism started as a response to all of those problems in the capitalist system. And they saw that capital equaled power. So if you had money, then you're able to have power in society. And if you had power in society, you could get more money and then use that to make more money and more power and more money and more power. And it fed back in on itself. So that's why these select few people were making all this money and earning all of that power for themselves. So for society to be fair and equal, the wealth would need to be more evenly split up between everybody. And so you would take, you would find ways to redistribute the wealth from the people who had too much to the people who didn't have enough. And that could be done through taxes, that could be done through um, separate systems of ownership. So for instance, in uh, socialism, society as a whole is most important and you need everyone to live together in harmony uh, so that you can all work towards the same goals of having a solid, good producing society. Um, all people should be equal as a result. And there would be tight government control over the economy to help make sure that that happens. Um, property, instead of you owning your own individual property for the most part, especially property used to produce more stuff, would be held in a common pool and distributed according to various criteria, like uh, how much it's needed by you or the people around you, how much you would be able to use it efficiently. And that would be determined by the government, which ideally would be made up of 
uh, experts and the people themselves. But as we will see later, uh, it doesn't really work out like this. But that's all for this video.